We have Ebro responds to the 6 9 report. Oh, Ebro, Ebro, Ebro. Ebro, Ebro, Ebro. You know what Ebro reminds me of? Thinking about it now. Ebro kind of. Or, you know, someone reminds me of Ebro, Logan Sama. Do you remember when Logan Sama had that show on Kiss 100 and he, st- and he, and he was going on as if, like, his radio sh- Kiss was way to keep hot, hot, hot 97? And he, was, he would only want to get up established artists when the grime scene was, like, you know, what, not what it was today or the or the rap, UK rap scene wasn't what it was today. There, wasn't, there was probably only five artists he could legitimately bring up on there who actually, who actually had record deals or who were had songs charting in, like, you know, the, the regular charts. Um, and he'd kind of go on as if, like, his radio station was the major leagues right and he went to he did it in a way to maybe cultivate a scene and to have some sort of hierarchy and to i don't know develop artists whatever it was it just smacked of hypocrisy it just it just smacked of indignation it just smacked as if like he didn't think his own shit stink he just got a bit too big for his breeches he got a bit of a big head at the time too after 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 also gave the same i was really young at the time i was on the forums and he was on the forums and he came across really bad on the internet forums it comes of happens sometimes right because remember, this is before social media. People have to interact with each other that way, right? So this big dude who has this amazing radio station, a big platform, is talking to spotty, dusty kids like me in my bedroom who are like, you know, angry typing away whilst we wipe away fucking crumbs of hot dogs off our mouth that, you know, he shouldn't be on there and he should let so-and-so artists on. So, so maybe he just thought, you know what? Because you're asking for it, I'm just not going to give it to you. But he did come across like a huge dickhead, right? And then it was no surprise that after a few years, you know, his radio station went away or his radio show went away and he's not really, you know, I don't know what he's doing nowadays. I haven't checked for Logan Simon in a while, but Ebro reminds me a lot of him, right? And Ebro even more so because I feel as if like he's so, I have sympathy for Ebro because I think he's very aware of how quickly his job or his relevancy can disappear in one moment. So in order to kind of hold on to it, he's got two options, right? He has to play this kind of like villain role and he also has to kind of establish some kind of gatekeeper responsibility or whatever it may be, right? This kind of like intrinsic need to kind of be the bastion and to kind of fight the good fight for hip hop. When in general, he's just trying to make sure he's able to provide for his family, which I don't have a problem with. But, you know, it's just annoying to see it overall. But I think there also been the thing that's really helped him is that he's in New York. And if you know anything about hip hop, you'd know that all the record labels are based in New York. The biggest station, quote unquote, in the industry is Hot 97, which is not really, it's probably Power 105, maybe specifically the Breakfast Club. But, you know, in terms of like cachet, in terms of reputation, all the people in that building of Hot 97 are very well regarded in the industry. They're the ones that, quote unquote, make the, the songs go boom and whatever it may be. So he has this very, he has a very fortunate position where by proxy, he works at Hot 97, who happens to be situated in, in New York. And also, it's no coincidence that he's also kind of married up and got buddy-buddy with Apple, who are very kind of, you know, um, um, who play a large role in ensuring certain artists get certain places and maybe kind of, you know, engineering the scene to go where they want it to go. It's a very weird conspiracy theory, but if you know, if you know, you know. So I get it, I get it. But this hot, but this six nine, this six nine thing for me represents just how this, um, no, this is just how disconnected, or just how like disconnected, is it disconnected, just how unaware of what the, what's actually going on these guys are with six nine and stuff. Because I guess six nine, yes, don't get me wrong, he's not the, you know, I'm not gonna die on a six nine hill or anything. But I think what he represents is just this idea that in nowadays there is such a thing hip-hop has gone so global has become such a big pop music that an artist like six nine can essentially rat and supposedly um you know tell on all his co- co-defendants and his crew and his friends ruin people's lives who you know it's, you could be arguing they ruin their own lives by list, taking part in legal activities but don't get me wrong when you when you dedicate yourself to that kind of lifestyle you do sign an you know undeclared oath that you're going to you know remain quiet and you're going to you know honor the crew you're not going to snitch there is an unwritten code there so you kind of you know rejected all of that and it's a code that we're all aware of we we, we watch enough movies we'll watch you know we watch enough csi miami to know snitching and writing on your people or telling or fobbing your friends isn't a good thing but we're in a point now where we have to realize that hip hop in general has gone so big that there are some artists for the most part can get away with absolute murder. Like, you know what Donald Trump said that he could stand in Times Square, shoot one of his own, you know, what you call it, protect whatever um, fans and no one will give a shit, right? Um, that's true because there are so many fanatical fans out there, so many people who are ride or die this artist that no matter what they do, they're not going to be affected by it. They're not, that person's always going to have a career. It's very hard to kind of um, lose 
or not have a career in music if you're willing and able to make tunes you're willing and able to collaborate you're willing and able to kind of perform and go and tour it's very hard not to get fans right you you can once you get them once you get once you have fans the, the, your fans are there for life you look at someone like joe budden right he quits music and he's able to kind of segue those fans into podcasting that happens i'm sure some music fans fell off but for the most part most of the fans that are listening to his podcast are fans of his music as well so they're very aware of his humor very aware of his kind of point of view blah 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 so with six nine even though just put aside all what he's done and who he is it's no surprise he's going to be able to come out and demand such a high level of attention or a high level of interest because on paper he was one of the biggest artists before he went to prison he's still in demand now he still generates lots of clicks i'm sure some of the people in record labels are very familiar with places like google trends and stuff and are watching the spikes in engagement and when the news comes out about him so if he does get another deal <clears throat> It's so what? Do you know what I mean? It doesn't affect anyone else. It doesn't affect me. It doesn't affect you. If I if I don't if I don't agree with his decision to rat in his friends, I don't and I morally um have a, a really strong conviction against it. You know what I do? I vote with my feet. I just don't buy his stuff. Like I fucking hate the people that do palace, right? I think they're all wankers. So what do I do? I don't go and talk about it too much. I just don't buy the stuff. I don't support it. I don't click it. I just keep it moving. That's what I do. My own little thing. Because I have something against these people. But I don't understand this need to kind of publicize your discontent and also to say we're banning it. It's like, what the fuck are you banning it for? I'm not going to tell my friend not to wear a palace if he wants to wear it. You can wear it. I think it's shit. I'm going to spit on it. But you can wear it. You know what I mean? But I'm not going to tell you not to wear it around me. I, I don't I don't care that much. But to have this idea that you want to ban it is weird. So now Ebro is responding to that report that supposedly TMZ said, uh, TMZ said that Hot 97 were going to ban, not going to play 6 ix 9 music unless he made a banger. Now he's come out and said, oh, that's not true. You guys are capping, blah, 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 blah. So let's see what he to say on the, on the thing. But here's an article from Complex News that talks about it. But let's hear it from the horse's mouth because I haven't actually heard what he said. So let's kind of just play it now and then we can kind of talk about it on the other side. Let me get it up on here so you guys can see. Mm -mm. Let's see, he's responding. He, this is his response to it. What do you have to say about it? No, I can react to it. Reaction videos from Agostino. So all that big willy talk, hop you up, playing yourself, yo, playing yourself, yo, playing yourself. Okay, go. Come on. Sit, right, man. If you acknowledge in this other Christopher they talking about today, you know what we have for you. Congratulations, you played yourself. Yo, and if, if your kids get school off today and they're like, oh, Columbus Day, and you're not taking the time out to tell them who Columbus really was. Murderer. Congratulations, you played yourself. You gotta tell them, man. Murderer. Terrorist. Murder. I know he's joking, but imagine having the gumption to tell people that they should tell their kids about Christopher Columbus, about him being a murderer, whilst they're gonna go play dress up in school. You think that's appropriate? Cool. <laughs> Terrorist, absolute terrorist. Can't believe y'all walking in that parade today, man. It's embarrassing. I thought this was a progressive city, a progressive state. You know they got states around the nation that call today Indigenous Peoples Day. I hope we get the six nine bit. I don't care about these people. Don't like dudes. to change names. It's their, it's their, it's our memories. What are we gonna do with our memories all the time? Man walked from Indianapolis to a suburb in Wisconsin. Where is it? What's actually talking to him? Cut that out I mean, these stories aren't funny. Inherently, they're not funny. It's very serious and bad. We have a real problem with child yeah. predators in this country and in this world. And now with the internet, their connection to children is terrifying. Did they even speak about it? Oh, they just clickbait me into the this. Idea oh, my this God. This dude walked 350 miles. Damn. And then got there. Come on. Yourself. Yo, man. Rosenberg was on your list today. I think I got to give it. I think I gotta give it to ourselves. Wow. What do you mean? Hot 97. What happened? Well, I went on TMZ this morning. I was sent a uh, I was sent a link. Here we go. To TMZ, and the headline on TMZ says. Pierre Rosenberg, the Hot the voice of the street, shunning Takashi Six Nine music, unless that headline alone is. Congratulations, yeah. <laughs> you played yourself. Yo, either you're shunning the music or, or you're not. not. It's Terrible. It says, New York City's <laughs> biggest hip-hop radio station. Thank you, TMZ. I wouldn't think you feel that way based on the way you post things. <laughs> says, Takashi 6 9 will get no spins once he releases new music. Unless the snitching rapper's music forces their hand. What do you say about it? You Where's mean the, the reasons that we decide to play all music? Congratulations. Ah, yeah, that's how everything yourself. works. What? I mean, yes. Flex, Drewski. 
Okay, anyway, they don't say nothing about it. It's a clickbait article. I'm sorry for wasting your time. Let's move on. 187 are garbage. Um, I don't really care. And again, I think it just represents the larger society. If you really have a strong conviction against what 6 9 did or what any artist does, you know how you um, voice your opinion? You just don't buy or support their stuff. You don't keep talking about it and complaining and moaning like that Jamila Jamil girl with Kim Kardashian and all that um, flat, tummy, flat tummy tea stuff. If you don't like that sort of stuff, just promote your own thing that's more healthy. Promote a healthier lifestyle. Promote people working out, balanced diet. But don't keep badgering on about these people that drink flat tummy tea because they're always going to exist. Just keep promoting your thing because no one's going to listen to you. You just get annoying after a while. And it's no coincidence that now she's fucking, you know. Anyway, I'm not going to get into that one. But 